Alright guys, how you doing? It's Rabir. Hope you're all well. This has taken a little while to get out there just because of everything that's been going on, but this is part three of my Superior Drummer tutorials. So in the first episode we looked at programming a basic beat, second lesson we looked at programming a slightly more complex beat, and in this lesson, this is the third and final instalment of the beginners uh, programming lessons, we're looking at drum fills and a little bit of mixing. So we'll start with drum fills. They're a huge important part of a drummer's sound and the, the difficulty with programming drum fills is making sure that they sound human. The thing is, with a drum fill, it's the exposed moment in a song or a part where the drummer is on his own in the sense that the listener is going to be focusing on the drums, you know, or at least to a certain extent. So you want to make sure that if you're programming your drums, it sounds real, you know, it sounds more realistic and human. So I thought the best way to do that would be to pre-program a drum fill from a song that we're all, you know, some of you hopefully know, uh, and then we're going to break it down and look at how we can make it sound more human. Hopefully you can see on screen I've got Logic Pro X set up. Again, just to reiterate, I do use Logic Pro X. If you do use Cubase or Pro Tools or any other type of DAW, then there will be a piano roll feature in that that Superior will run in. For me and for all the people using Logic Pro X, this is the right way to go about it. You can see on screen I've got my piano roll window open and I've got my MIDI data just sat here. Now I'm going to play you what it sounds like on its own and then we're going to go back and sort it out. So I'm sure you'll all agree that that is just, it's just not musical in any way, shape or form. Now the drum fill that we're looking at here is the very beginning drum fill to the song Two Princes by Spin Doctors. So if you don't know it, then go check it out so that you've got a little bit of sort of relevance to this lesson. But it was a good one because it had some nice drum rolls, some dynamics, some kick and tom rolls and stuff like that. So I figured it would work. What I'm going to do is show you how I programmed that drum fill for the first part. I'm just going to mute all the drums that we've just programmed and I'm going to give you a quick example of what's going on. So in the grid, in the piano roll, you can see uh, the grid. Now the grid is split into 16th notes, which means if I was to go and draw in a note on every bar, you would have this. Now, obviously, if you're doing a standard drum roll over a drum groove, which is like dum cat, dum cat, da 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 dum cat, that would work. You'd just be able to place a MIDI note in those cells, and that would give you a straight 16th note vibe over 100 beats per minute, which is what we're, we're working with here. But I wanted to get the very beginning of this drum solo to be double stroke rolls, which means for every one sixteenth note is hitting the drum twice, which means you're playing a thirty second note. In, in essence, you double up the sixteenth note to get twice as many notes. So, if we go back to our drum fill and you hear, again, it's all over the shop, but as you can see, what I've gone and done here is I've put in two beats for every one cell, which means that those are thirty second notes. And to make sure that they're super tight, what I went and did was I highlighted them all. I went up to my quantizing and then I went down to 30 second note to make sure they perfectly sit in the right timing. Now, you can mess with this afterwards to get a more human feel or not, it's up to you. But it's the quickest and easiest way to get things in time as a foundation. So, let's go ahead and make this more human. So, I'm going to get my velocity tool. Now I want these four hits to be softer, so I'm going to bring them down. Now I want the main accents of this fill to be obvious, so that means anything in between needs to be a lot quieter. It's easy to work out where that is because I put a kick drum on every accent that I want to hear louder than the gross notes. So as you can see, they're all laid out. So that means in between, I'm bringing down the velocity of each drum. Now that we've gone and reduced the velocity of everything here, except for the accents, let's see if it sounds any better. To me that already sounds way more human. And what I like to do is randomise the velocities a little bit, so as you can see these are all still the same hit, the same velocity, so it's going to not sound overly even. Now I'd say the very first hit, when you hit a drum, might be slightly harder than the others, so let's push that up a bit. Same on this side. 
and then let's just randomize them a bit. So that double hit there, you would never hit that quite so precisely and powerfully in one go. So I'm going to bring the first one down. Now the other thing is that this is an intro fill, so we're going to break into a groove after this. So I may as well program in the drum groove from the song just so that you can hear it in context and also it's slightly more complex than anything we've done before. So let's just play that again. So let's go ahead and program in the rest of the beat. Now one thing to bear in mind is that with this drum beat in particular, or it depends on the drum beat you're programming, but for the sake of ease for this video, the drum beat is a straight you know, 4-4 four, four drum beat, so the snare is always going to land on the down beat. So what I want to do is I want to be able to play to make it easy for myself for programming purposes, I'm going to put the snares in first so that I know where I can throw in ghosties and the rest of it. So I've programmed in the kick and the snare just so that you can hear what's going on and again it sounds really random on its own but anyway, let's play it from the fill in. So it really does sound bad. <laughs> But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make, make changes here. So I'm going to do the velocity for the kicks first. And again, there's no real rule on how loud or soft something should be hit, but it's whatever sounds good to you. Once we get the rest of the ghost notes in and the hi-hats, it should sound a lot more comfortable. So let's go ahead and draw some ghost notes in. When you want to be able to play a quick double stroke ghost note before a kick comes back in, da -da 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 -da, that kind of sound, remember that's a 30 second note ghost notes. So when you're doing that, just to be safe, you want to highlight them, go to your double second note, click quantize, and it should make them nice and nice and precise for the time being. So that note didn't actually work sat over the kick drum. It's always good to play things through to check that they work. So next I need to put my hi-hats in. And I know this beat starts with an open hi-hat. So what I want to do is I want to draw in my hi-hat notes first. So it does sound pretty naff at the minute, but what we need to do is go ahead and bring down the velocities again. Normally when you've got a drummer playing his hi-hat beat on the quarter note, not everyone is going to be the hardest, it's going to be like hard soft, hard soft, hard soft, like that's the kind of vibe. So if you're ever unsure about anything to do with what sounds natural as a drummer, if you're not a drummer yourself, if you've got friends who are drummers, ask them what they would do. If not, listen closely to a song or a drum solo or a drum groove. You can find them all over YouTube and just listen to the mechanics of how they go about creating that sound. Okay, so I've put my hi-hats in and I've gone over with the velocity editor just to make sure that there's a bit more of a human sound to the hi-hats. Um, because you don't want every drum and every hit to be at full power. But let's have a listen to the whole thing with some minor velocity editing in place. Okay, so we're pretty good there, but I'm just going to go ahead and lower even more the in-between hits. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy and paste this drum groove. Because most drum grooves in 4-4 are broken up into bars of 8, 16, you know, as a phrase, then it's quite easy to just copy and paste. And for the sake of ease in this video, that's what we've done. I've just copy and pasted the whole groove so that we can listen to it back to back. So one thing I'm going to change before we move on is I'm just going to take off the ghost note at the very end of the last downbeat.
And the other thing is, sometimes you hear a ghost note straight after a snare hit, and that's just the style of the drummer. And it's something I had noticed with the original, so that's why I've put them in. I'm just going to bring them back down in velocity a little bit more, so they're a little bit less intrusive. Now because these very quick ghost notes are close together in velocity, I'm just going to bring them down a little bit more and randomise them a tiny bit just because you don't want them to be exactly the same every time. And the other thing is that you might want to move them slightly further apart just in case you want a slightly more of that human sound, you know? Just a slightly bigger gap in the, in the sound sometimes goes a long way. Because you can't expect every drummer to be, you know, metronomically perfect. So with that in mind, I'm just going to go ahead and move these a little bit. So let's have a listen now. So there you go. By just moving a few hits around here and there to take them in theory, out of time, you're giving it a little bit more of a human approach because those ghosties are never going to be as perfect every time. But you can keep doing this, it's almost like doing a coat of paint on a wall. You don't just do the one coat, you know, you don't just do the one coat of velocity editing on your drums. You go over it again and again until you really are happy with the way it sounds and also same with the timings of each hit. Anyway, I'm happy with the groove there. so. I'm just going to copy them over again just to make it easy to show you how we'd mix them afterwards. So, so now we've got a full eight bars of this drum groove and the beginning intro fill and we, we like the way it sounds. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'd mix it just a little bit. What I've done is I've opened a template where I've already pre-EQ'd and mixed a few bits and bobs just to give you an idea of how it's going to sound. So here we have my mixer window and let me just bring this up a bit so you can see exactly what's going on. So these are all my channel strips like they would be on a desk and obviously you've got your volume, you've got your pan, you've got the output it's going to and all the rest of it. And for the sake of ease we'll just stick to the plugins, the bussing and the volumes and panning. So four things to worry about. So these are all my drums as you can see they're labelled at the bottom here. So that's the clicky sound of the kick, the very top end stuff. This is the punch of the kick so that's what's going to hit you in the chest. And then the sub, the, the sort of sub kick, which gives you that low end oomph that comes with a kick drum. On a recording, it's got a lot of depth. And then we've got snare top, snare bottom, and then a snare, which is an 1176 snare, which essentially is a compressed snare sound. Then we've got our hi-hats, tom one, tom two, floor tom, and then a bigger floor tom. We've got our overheads in stereo, left and right. We've got an ambient mic, an ambient mid, an ambient far, and then at the very end, depending on if I choose to use it or not, is a basically a slammed, super compressed filter drum, which is good sometimes to get more detail out of the snare. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a little bit about how I'd EQ the sound of this drum kit. So I want to start with the snare. So I'm just going to loop this drum, this drum groove, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solo it. Basically what I'm about to show you is really handy for pulling out all the unwanted sounds in guitar sounds, in drums, uh, in a lot of things, but we're just focusing on the snare right now. So as you can see, we've got a couple of different EQs going on here. Now this is around 2450, which is 2450 kilohertz, and I've made quite a big sort of sound, I've made quite a big difference here on the snare, that's to get the sort of slap of the stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just alt, that's Currently at plus 4dB, I'm going to alt click that. I'm going to alt click this, and that just takes it back to Unity. So, just something a little bit about the EQ system in uh, Logic, but it is the same for any other you know sort of EQ that you might use in a DAW. You've got your frequency spectrum from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that's the low end all the way to the high end. And to be fair, 20 kilohertz and 20 hertz are beyond human hearing capability. So you're covering a lot of ground here. Anyway. Here we go with the snare again. So you can see, you can see on the on the analyzer, which I've chosen to keep on, where this sound is most prominent. So 
quite a spike around 200 hertz, which means this is quite a punchy sort of thuddy sort of snare drum. So going back to this EQ here, you can see the width and that's controlled by this very bottom control here and I can widen it and I can quine it. So if I show you what it sounds like, So the idea there is that I've chosen the area in the snare drum where I want to hear more of the stick attack and that's in the, in the power, the, the crack, which I love in a snare. So it's around here. And the other thing is you might want a little bit more definition out of those ghosties on the top skin. So you might want to just boost up somewhere near the top end of the treble um, sort of high end spectrum. So we've still got that note going on. Now I need to get rid of that, so I need to find it. The best way to do that is to, you know how I said you can widen and, sh and narrow these uh, EQ curves? So I've got one here that's completely narrow as it can go. So the idea is that I use this and I boost it all the way up to plus 24 so that I can hear it's going to be blatantly obvious when I've hit the most resonant part of this snare drum. And you'll see exactly what I mean now. So you can hear I've picked it out, and actually that's an octave higher than, the, the, than where this snare is really resonant. But I'm going to pull that out anyway because it's an overtone we don't want. So if I get rid of it, so that's disappeared, but we've still got a lower one. So I've got another one set up here, so I'm going to move this down, further down the frequency spectrum to hear where that really low thud's coming from. So you see what happened there? It was really resonant, quite overpowering, and then you'd pull it all the way out and then it becomes pretty much inaudible. So now the snare, the snare top at least, has got much less of a ring to it. See that? So if I put it back in the mix, so there you go. That's you know how you get rid of unwanted frequencies in a snare drum. It's really quite a difficult thing to get used to at first because you really have to rely on your ear to really pinpoint where that nuisance frequency is. But you have them all over the place. You have them in guitars a lot, in the high end you have to pull them out, but with drums it's a little bit easier because there's no melody and there's no real change in sound. Once the kit's got its sound and you're playing, you can just loop a bar of it and then find that frequency in a snare that you don't want. So let's have a look at the kick drum. Now I'm using a combination of EQ and some compression just to you know poke it out a bit. So let's have a look. Because I want this to be just the click of the kick, I don't really need a lot of the low end. So with it with it off, it's like this. Now if I put it on. So we've got a nice click there, and if I go across to my punch. So together, I should have the punch and the click. And it really is to taste, you know, when it comes to mixing drums, it really is to taste what you want more of. It depends on the style of music. If it's metal, it's probably more clicky. If it's more alternative, it'll be duller, you know, depends on what you're trying to do. So. So I guess hi-hats are a bit loud. So when it comes to snares, whether it's the snare top, snare bottom, snare middle, I always like the top to have a bit more prominence in the mix because it really gives you the power and the thwack there, but it is important to bring in some snare bottom as well so that you can get all the ghost note definition. And also, this is a really cool plugin called Bittersweet, and it, I use it on the snare top, and what it does is it gives you more of a, of a transient on the initial hit, which essentially means it's it's almost like a, a compressor for the first initial 
hit of a sound wave, so it gives you more power. So if I show you what it sounds like. So as you can hear, it gives you far more punch. So I'm just going to bring in a bit of that. So again, it's just a, it's just basically it's a long game. It's a, you have to be patient and you take a long time over the, the small intricacies of a sound, especially when you're mixing for a full band. It is important to, to express the use of parallel compression and ambience in a drum sound. So firstly, parallel compression. In a nutshell, it's where you take an element of the kit, so it might be a bit of overheads, kick, snare, some toms, and then you throw all that to a bus, which essentially is you take all that stuff and you put it on one fader together. And then what you do is you put some compression on it, maybe a bit of ambience, whatever you like, and just slam it, basically do what you need to do to it to use it as reinforcement for the drum sound. Because as music gets louder and more intense dynamically, you might miss some of the characteristics of that snare drum on the underside. So you use the parallel compression on a fader to bring it up so that it reinforces all the character because essentially you know, compressing is where you bring the highs and the lows closer together so it's all equal. So the idea about having it on a fader is so that you use it when you need to to get that character to come across in louder sections. So that's parallel compression. Ambience is where you, you create a room sound or you use reverbs to sound like a real life room if you didn't have the luxury of recording in one. Um, or you use the ones provided with Superior Drummer. And the good thing is that Superior is so, so good that they always provide a great room sound. So let me show you what some of the room sounds like on here. So. So that's the immediate room sound. This is the mid distance room sound. I find that incredible, it's so realistic. And then this is the far one. So if you remember, if we go back into the superior construct, we go across to the mixer tab, and then we find our ambience mic, which is here, ambient far, and I've soloed it. I can go in and I can show how much bleed of stuff that I want to have. So obviously I've put more snare than kick, but I'm gonna bring that in a bit more. So there you go, that's how you go about getting your, you know, you just balance out the room sounds to what you like. Now, so now that I've got the kind of balance across the drums in this groove that I like, the next thing to do is for me to, if I want to, create my own room. So I've got a drum room right over here on the far side that I've created. And how you do that in Logic is you highlight the drums that you want. So let's say, for the sake of ease, all of them, or at least let's go with this many. And you can see here, you've got sends. Now all mine, at the moment, I've only got, my kick is going to bus one my snare top, snare bottom, and my middle snare, or my 1176 going to bus one, my hats, my toms, my floor tom, and you know what, I'm going to put my overheads in there as well, because overheads are good for adding that glue. And then this is your level, this is how much you send to that bus. So if I have got most things on Unity, some things are on full, but let's have a listen. So if I go across to this bus now, I've called it Drum Room, I solo it, I've put some 
compression and I've put reverb on there to create my own room. Now, in my reverb settings, I've taken the dry signal out, so all you're hearing is the reverb on its own. So if I, I've got that on a fader, and again, as, as I said, I've compressed it. Now if I bring that into the mix, so let me pull it right out. The other thing to bear in mind is if I don't want this to be a room and I'd rather it was my parallel compression, because you don't want both of those on the same bus, you see, it's one or the other. You don't parallel compress and create a room in the same bus. They'd become two separate things because you want them on their own faders. Anyway, let's say I'm going to turn this into a drum bus, a uh, parallel compression. And then I'm going to use one of my favourites, which is the Joey Sturgis tones, and this is Transify. Now Transify is really good because it gives you some really, really cool uh, control over the frequency spectrum of the compressor. It's basically it's a multi-band compressor and it's pretty good for drums that I've discovered anyway. Might not be for everyone but I like it. So. So just using Transify on its own, I'm going to bring in the parallel compressed drum sound. What you should notice here is there's more detail in the ghost notes and the snares underside. It just, the, the thing is, isolated on its own, it's going to sound too much, but as soon as you bring in distorted guitars and bass and singing, that is a really useful tool to hear the definition of the drums. So here we go. This is it without, and I'm going to bring it in slowly. So that's how you go about doing a bit of par parallel compression. And again, this is a basic beginner's overview on how you'd approach the beginnings of mixing drums, getting volumes, uh, and also uh, you know editing drum fills and you know basically just all the basics. And I've tried to fit it into three videos. And let's just have a listen to what we've got. So here we go. We've covered a lot of ground in this one video. I'm sorry for the intense length this video probably is, but I do want to do more videos on mixing drums, but in this context, it's quite difficult to go into a lot of depth because we're looking at programming as well. So hopefully this video has been useful for those wanting to program more realistic drum beats, drum fills, and then start to get a nice idea of how you go about beginning to mix drums. Um, so. Just to recap, the really important stuff is use the piano roll grid to be able to divide your you know, fills up between 32nd notes, 16th notes, all that kind of stuff. Use the quantize tool to make that a little bit easy for yourself. Use the velocity editor to really humanize the drum parts to get ghost notes to be very different from the main backbeats. Uh, and generally randomize things, not just in terms of velocity, but you might want to move hits around just a little bit so that you get a little bit more of a human vibe there. Next, you want to start EQing the nuisance frequencies out of your drums. So get an EQ um, and then create a notch as narrow as possible, boost it until you hear the really resonant, horrible frequency in there and pull it all the way out to get rid of that. And then you want to be able to send all the drums, including some of the overheads, to a bus. So you want to select them all and then go to your send function, send them to bus 1 and then do the same for bus 2, exactly the same. 
have one as your parallel compression and one as your drum room sound. And basically it's in order to create a realistic room sound and also to give you more drum detail on a fader for where the song gets dynamically intense. So that's what we've covered in part three of my beginners drum programming and mixing tutorials. Uh, I really hope you found this useful and as I said I'm going to be carrying on with this in due course. Thank you so much to ToonTrack for you know sharing these videos and I really hope they've been useful. And also just a shout out to Progressive Foundry for being one of my favourite drum libraries in the Superior you know, series. I absolutely love it. It's the most organic realistic drum sounds for me in the style of music I like to write. And I really find it, it's a great place to start for mixing drums for the tracks that I'm demoing. So can't speak higher of the Progressive Foundry libraries. Highly recommended. Um, we'll maybe even be doing some giveaways in the near future with ToonTrack. But until then, I've been Rabir and I sincerely wish you a good day. Uh...